Hi, I'm James Ellingham. And I'm Paul Criswell. And together, we are using deep learning and neural networks to detect epistasis in the human genome. Epistasis is the genetic phenomenon in which nonlinear interactions between genes cause physical effects. But what does this mean? Let's consider eye colors. Each eye color has a specific gene, but other genes can also influence the color of the eyes. For example, the albinism gene causes eyes to be red. What this means is that in order to determine someone's eye color from only their genetic information, one would have to consider both the eye color genes as well as the albinism gene. The albinism gene can be said to mask the eye color genes. These sorts of nonlinear interactions are typical of epistasis and make it computationally difficult to detect, which Paul will elaborate on. Typical methods to detect epistasis involve what's called an exhaustive search. These will check every gene against every other gene in the dataset from which it can infer which interactions are having an epistatic effect. This graph shows the number of checks required for a set number of genes in a database. As we can see, if you are only checking for one gene causing a disease, the number of checks will equal the number of genes in the database. However, as soon as you are checking for two genes interacting to cause a disease, the number of checks increases quadratically with regards to the number of genes in the database. And once you are testing for more than two genes interacting, the number of checks required becomes so high that it is infeasible to use these type of methods for larger datasets. This graph shows the running time for MDR, the industry standard tool for detecting epistasis. On the x-axis we have the number of genes in the dataset, and on the y-axis we have the running time for the test. The different lines represent tests run for multiple interactions. Blue for two interactions, cyan for three interactions, and purple for four interactions. As you can see, as the number of interactions increases, so does the running time in an exponential fashion. This exponential increase in running time is as a result of the exhaustive search technique used by MDR. In contrast, our neural network, shown in dashed lines, performs almost linearly with respect to both the number of genes in the dataset as well as the number of interactions that need to be tested for. For example, for 300 genes and testing for four interactions, MDR takes 13 and a half hours to run, while our neural network takes only two and a half minutes, a two order of magnitude improvement. This shows how our model is much better than MDR for large and complicated datasets with many interactions. However, Running time is not the only important thing to consider. The accuracy is as important, if not more important. Different types of neural networks will be able to detect epistasis with different levels of accuracy. Here we see a linear neural network attempting to detect a nonlinear problem epistasis and is unable to learn over a set number of training steps. Its accuracy, shown on the y-axis, is never really able to go above 50%, nothing better than random chance. However, once nonlinearity is added to the neural network, we are able to achieve results of almost 60%. And our final model using what are called convolutional neural networks is able to achieve accuracies of as high as 70%, which is in line with the industry standard tool. This shows that our convolutional neural network is able to achieve accuracies as good as the industry standard while significantly increasing efficiency in terms of runtime. A special thanks needs to go out to Scott Hazelhurst for his supervision and guidance throughout the project. And thanks for watching.